What's up y'all, BK back here with another instructional video. And in this one, we are gonna talk about a very fundamental shot to the game of pickleball. It is arguably one of the most important control shots that you have to know when you step on the pickleball court. It really helps you get to that kitchen line, which is so important in pickleball. So we are, of course, today gonna be talking about the third shot drop. Let's do it. Now in the sport of pickleball, every shot is given a number starting with the serve. So the serve is the first shot of the point, the return is the second shot, and in this video we are going to be talking about the third shot. So as the server, when that return comes back to your team, the next shot is called the third shot, and the most important thing that you can do with the shot is try to get that ball into the kitchen so that now you as a team can move up to the kitchen line. With the third shot, you usually have two options. You can either drive the ball or drop the ball. Driving the ball doesn't give you much time to get yourself to the kitchen line because it's a harder, faster shot, which means the ball's gonna come back to you quicker. However, with a drop, what you can do is buy time by hitting a ball into the kitchen so that your opponent is not able to take it out of the air and attack that ball. So you have that extra one or two seconds to get yourself to the kitchen line and play out the point from a neutral position. Getting to the kitchen line is so important in pickleball that the third shot drop is a must have shot in your arsenal for you to be successful in the sport. Now there are three things that you absolutely need to do to hit the perfect third shot drop consistently. The number one thing is to always make sure that you're hitting the ball out in front of your body. You never want that ball to get parallel to yourself or behind your body because what that means is now it's much harder to lift that ball and generate the leverage with your shoulder to get that ball over the net and back down into the kitchen. You're looking for that beautiful little arc where that ball gets nice and high to an apex and comes down into the kitchen. So taking the ball out in front allows you to really lift that ball consistently every time rather than getting behind you where now you need to use your wrist and your shoulder to put a lot of leverage into that ball to get that ball going over the net. Now the second thing with the third shot drop is your arm angle. You wanna try and have that nice 45 degree angle on that paddle face so that you can have the ball hit the paddle and go up. You wanna be able to lift that ball so that it goes over the net and back down. Now the way you're gonna do that is what we call the Spider-Man wrist where you're gonna have that wrist down, locked in position, so that when that paddle comes in, it gives you that nice 45 degree angle. So with this angle, all you have to do is use your shoulder to lift the ball. So try not to lift from the elbow like that, because this is not gonna give you the forward momentum that you need, or also avoid using the wrist like that, because now you have too much margin for error where that paddle is going away from that 45 degree and hitting all these different angles during the course of the shot. What you wanna do instead is lock the wrist, try to lock the elbow and lift from the shoulder where now, as you can see, my paddle keeps that angle all the way through and just has that nice forward momentum where I'm able to lift the ball. So all I'm trying to do is lock that wrist in that Spider-Man wrist position, lock this elbow a little bit and then now lift from the shoulder where all you're doing is getting that nice lift on the ball every time. Since this ball is coming to us and we're trying to lift the ball, we have to get under the ball. And the way you're gonna do that is by squatting down with your legs rather than bending down with your back. I see a lot of tendencies in pickleball players of getting low by using their back. However, what this does is it changes the angle of your paddle. As you can see right here, I have my 45 degrees, but if I bend my back, watch what happens to my paddle face. My paddle is now facing the ground and that's no way to lift the ball. So again, keep that back posture straight. All you're gonna do is bend the knees and squat down in a nice position. Now the paddle angle stays the same, but I have a much lower base from which I can lift that ball. So again, you wanna avoid bending down from the back. So I'm gonna stand up, keep my posture stable, and bend down from my knees and squat down, use my glutes, my hamstrings to get low now I'm able to use the shoulder and that paddle angle to lift the ball. Third and arguably most important thing with the third shot drop is your contact point. 
The point at which you hit the ball determines how consistent you are with the third shot drop. Now the perfect third shot drop is going to be hit when you allow the ball to bounce, allow it to come up to its peak, and then that ball starts dipping down, that's when you want to make contact with the ball. So you want that ball to come in on the bounce, get up to its peak, and then as it starts to come down, that's when you want to make contact because that's the perfect position where you can change the momentum of the ball and get it to go back up. If you try to hit the ball right off the bounce, the ball is still in an upward motion. So when you hit the ball and try to change its direction, the ball is going to get higher and higher, leading to more pop-ups. However, if you allow that ball to come up and now start going down, now the ball has a downward momentum going into the paddle where it's not gonna slide off and it's actually landing perpendicular to the paddle. This allows you to get perfect momentum and perfect control to the back of the ball, allowing you to control it better. This is really the key to hitting a third shot drop. So try not to get caught too close to the line where if that return comes in deep, you don't have time to allow that ball to come up to its peak. What you wanna do is stand off the line a little bit, see where that return's coming, and if you can let that ball to bounce, come up and then hit it as it's coming down, that's when you're gonna get a perfect third shot drop. So you're always gonna move into the shot or you're gonna try and even take a step back on a deep return where you can allow that ball to start coming down before you make contact with it. Now, as you can see, I'm trying to make contact in front of my body and I'm just using my shoulder to push these balls. I'm trying to allow that ball to bounce and then as it reaches its peak and starts coming down, that's when I want to make contact with the ball. That's going to allow me to really get under the ball and lift it while making contact well in front of my body. Now again, we're just simply going to keep our paddle out in front, try to get that contact point nice and easy, let that ball bounce, get to its peak, and start falling down. That gives you the perfect third shot drop, and you're going to remain very consistent with this shot. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you learned a little something about how to hit that third shot drop. It's definitely gonna help you become a better pickleball player and stay more consistent on the court. As always, make sure to subscribe below to my channel for more pickleball content and also follow me on Instagram at BK underscore pickleball. Ton of discount codes in the description below for all my affiliates. So if you're looking for new paddles, eyewear, anything else, I have plenty of discount codes. So make sure to use those. Hit me up for all your pickleball needs. I'm now coaching full time. So make sure to contact me if you are looking for lessons in the Orlando area. Comment below what video you'd like to see next. And until next time, I'll see you later.